And now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. We've heard from a Republican on the Finance Committee. How about a Democrat's point of view? Right now we want to introduce Delegate Linda Longstrath, Democrat from uh, Marion County and a member of the Finance Committee. And a Thank you. Long time member of the legislature. How long have you been here now? How many terms? Uh, this is my 16th year. Wow. Well, let's talk about the budget. We're in a weird situation this year. After years of big deficits, we're looking at surpluses. Yeah. Uh, overall, your impressions of the budget process and what we're going to be able to fund so far this year. I think, uh, well, with the surpluses, what we're looking at and started yesterday was that we are going to fund and equalize the higher education, the four-year colleges, so that they all come out even with a little extra money. I think that's wonderful. Uh, with the community colleges, we also gave them in our house budget some extra money on top of what is already in the budget. So I think they'll be very happy with that. They need it. They need to be equalized and share in the wealth. We had years of deep deficits down here and across the board budget cuts and obviously that affected higher ed, affected everybody. Yes, it did. Uh, how much is this going to repair the, the damage from that, if I can use um, that word? I think with the colleges, they, they had a Blue Ribbon Commission and the Blue Ribbon Commission came out with this suggestion. And we put their suggestion in to kind of balance them out and bring them whole into our house budget. Now, if that changes, we'll, we'll see when it goes to the Senate. Now, when the chairman was here earlier in the program, he talked about the bipartisan budget effort this year. Do you really, it, do you, I mean, I, I remember years yeah. past when the parties butting heads really yeah. hard. I mean, did, is it working better this year because we have a surplus? Yes, I think, well, it's working better for a surplus. And I think that uh, we have a finance committee that's uh, very open to each other to discuss things and the doors open. And that makes a big difference if we can go in and discuss what our issues are also. Let's talk about uh, the pay raise issue because because obviously we had teachers down here for yeah. two days on strike last week. They were really protesting um, charter schools and the education savings accounts, not so much the, the, the pay raise issue. Yeah. But there is a pay raise in there for them. What about the rest of the state employees? They want to know, are they going to get 5% this yes, year? Yes, that's built into the budget. That's why you don't see it in the bill. It's already built into the budget that they get 5%. So this one, the bill that's out now is for the teachers and service personnel. And then I think the Senate made the state police separate. But I think it'll go through the process in the Senate. I think it will come out as a clean bill, but we have to wait and see. You know, it, they sent it to education, it'll go to finance, but uh, the state employees will get their their increase. And I mean, obviously with a week to go, I mean, the pressure cooker down here is really something yeah. you guys got a lot to get finished. Yeah. Uh, where do we stand with in terms of fixing PEIA and get the state health insurance program we in just, better shape? Well, we just put in $105 million into PEIA to make it whole right now until 2020. Now, I don't know how we're going to fix it. We're going to have to look at that. We're going to have to find a stream that will come in every year to keep PEIA whole. We've not really discussed that that much for the fact that we had the teachers' raises, we had so many issues in the campus carry and all those things. So, But they are whole up until 2020, so we will go from there with PEIA. Another big thing that happened this past week, the cutting of the coal severance tax um, from 5% to 4% the first mm -hmm. year. You were one of the Democrats that support that. I know there was a lot of pressure not yeah. to, to support that, but what do you think the benefit will be of cutting the coal severance tax in the state? Well, when we were in finance and they said they wanted it from five to three, and I really thought this was a good it was an idea that uh, to bring coal, hopefully that will bring jobs. I did like the idea, we did an amendment that it went prorated for two, three, so we can see what's going on with our budget and what the coal company is going to do. It was all about hopefully that if they can save money, they will keep jobs and they will open up more coal mines and have more jobs. That was the promise and that's why I supported it. And obviously with coal being, or energy in general, being a very volatile economic sector, yes. you guys can go back and change it if things go yes. south again, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. If any we other have thoughts? To. Yeah. Any other thoughts well, before we um, go? I know there's a week left. <laughs> no, I think the other coal, the other issue with the coal was the um, rebate on the equipment, and you know we had some that did not vote for it, and some, and mainly it went to majority. But I think the point of it is that we're trying to bring back jobs. And that's what I was trying to do for my district and, and for the state of West Virginia. So um, I think that will help. So that's why I voted for it. All right, we want to thank Delegate Linda thank Longstrand, you. a good friend, Democrat thank of Marion you. County, thank also you. member of the Finance Committee. Great to see you on the show this week. And thank you. Good luck in the final week of session. Well, it's going to be crazy. Well, appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to talk about that controversial concealed or campus carry bill uh, when we come back here at Inside West Virginia Politics.